Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jamie, your crafty DIY guy, and I'm back. I have got four new projects for you today. I wouldn't classify these projects as farmhouse or industrial or modern. I think they kind of run the gamut. Um, there's probably a little bit of everything in there, including this guy right there that I'm obsessed with. I love it so, so much. If you are one of my OG subscribers, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and um, all of the feedback. I love interacting and chatting with all of you guys. Also, if you are one of my newer subscribers or maybe you happen to just kind of find this video because YouTube suggested it, Thank you, YouTube. I appreciate you guys being here as well. Um, I'm in my new setup here, and uh, it uh, was a lot to do yesterday. I've still got a mess on the other side of the camera, but I'm not gonna be fixing it today because I need to take a break. Um, I'm congested really, really bad today, and uh, I'm gonna take a lot of steam showers and try and get rid of all this mess. That way I can come back to you guys next week with another cool project. So rather than me rambling on, let's just get to the stuff. <laughs> Right, everyone, for this very first project, you are going to need some of these carpenter biscuits that you can pick up at your local hardware store. Also, I grabbed a round mirror when I was at Dollar Tree, as well as my favorite hole filler, or AKA spackle. You'll notice that each one of your biscuits has an embossed number on it, and that's really what you wanna cover up. So I'm just taking some of my spackle and just going through and kind of uh, plugging the hole of each one of those biscuits. And this only took about 15, 20 minutes, and then I let everything dry. Um, I think maybe overall, maybe an hour. After everything was good and dry, then I separated my mirror from the frame and from that cardboard backing. I flipped that cardboard backing upside down and then just started to glue those petals directly down to the back of the mirror, just kind of working my way all the way around until it looked like this when everything had dried. I took everything outside and spray painted it with this purple spray paint from Rust-Oleum. I really love this purple spray paint. It worked really well and it gave good coverage. After everything was dried, I took it inside and just started to reassemble the mirror right onto the backing itself. And this is what it looks like when it's on the wall. I love this. I think it's super cool. Um, I am going to repaint this today though. I think it would look absolutely amazing in an antique gold finish. So that is my project for today. But again, if this is your color choice, go for it. It's super bold, I love it. All right, for our next project, you are going to need one of these utility hooks, a bamboo cutting board, and also a locker mirror, which I all picked up at my local Dollar Tree store. The first thing I'm going to do is tape off my mirror. I did try to pry this mirror out of here, but that was impossible. And rather than breaking that mirror and having seven years of bad luck, I just decided to go ahead and tape this off. Um, I'm a little awkward at this. I don't, I don't know why. It took me like 675 pieces of tape in order to get this mirror covered, but I think I did a good job ultimately, and it looked like this. Then I took everything outside and spray painted it with my hammered black spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Also, I remembered that I needed to spray paint this utility hook, so I clipped off this utility hook to make it the same size as my cutting board, and uh, clearly I'm shaking the camera there, so I apologize for that. And um, after I was able to do this, I took it outside and spray painted it with that same black hammered spray paint. I went inside and I decided to age up my bamboo cutting board just a little bit. I wanted this to have kind of a, um, just a little bit more of an aged look. It was a slippery little sucker. And so I um, went with my antiquing wax from Waverly and again, just rubbing it up and down and then wiping off any excess. After everything had dried, I took it inside and revealed the mirror that was behind that tape. It actually worked out really well. I did notice that there was a little bit of pink showing through, so I just took my Sharpie uh, paint pen and just went in on the edges and just kind of cleaned that up. And then if there was any of that Sharpie that ended up on the mirror, I just took a little bit of nail polish on a Q-tip and just wiped it off that way, and it came off really easily. Then it was time to start assembling everything, so I flipped my cutting board over. I took my utility hook and just kind of eyeballed where I wanted it to go, and then I took out my staple gun, 
and just stapled this to the back. I made sure that the staple gun was at the top of each one of those, hitting that tripod once again. Apologies, guys. And then I uh, took some hot glue and put a generous helping on that. After everything dried, I flipped it over onto the other side and then glued my mirror down to the center of my board. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Again, I love this. I think it's super modern looking. It definitely has that industrial vibe. And I think I'm going to hang this one in my office. All right, for our next project, you're going to take a Dollar Tree wire waste basket and some of these wire brushes that you can grab from the hardware section. The first thing you're going to do is remove all of these needles from your wire brush. Now, they will put up a fight but you can win this. Um, I grabbed a very sturdy kind of pair of wire clippers or uh, wire thingies. I don't know what they're called. And um, I just removed the needles from each one of these um, wire brushes. And then I went in with my hole filler or my spackle and just filled in the holes. I don't know why that was so awkward sounding. <laughs> Anyway, after everything had dried, I set these aside and then it was time to start assembling my table legs or my planter legs. Then you're going to take your table legs and you're going to make sure that that hole is facing down. And then the spackled side is going to be up against the basket itself. And the reason why you're going to do this is... Um, well, you'll see in a little while while you're gonna, why you're going to do it that way. So I took a screw and uh, screwed it into the top of the uh, table leg, but the screw wasn't holding it by itself because it was a, the, the head of the screw was smaller than the webbing of the basket. So then I took my staple gun and uh, stapled each one of these legs to the basket itself. And that worked out really, really good. It held it very, very nicely. So after all that was done, um, this is kind of what it looks like. And uh, I don't know, I felt like it was missing something. So I decided to go ahead and pull out my painter's tape and I taped off the edges of the legs onto the basket so I could just paint everything. So I took my Waverly ink chalk paint and uh, decided to go ahead and paint these legs black. And I'm so glad that I did because I really love the way that this turned out. And uh, that painter's tape worked out perfectly, so I was lucky. Um, then the holes at the bottom that you remember I told you to save or to uh, point point uh, south, I uh, took some nautical rope and fed it through there, and then I just burned off those frayed edges. And then again, this is what it looks like when it's all done. I love this. I think it's super versatile. I think it's got a cool kind of a modern look. It definitely could skew farmhouse or even industrial very, very easily. And then on for our bonus project. This project, I really do like this one a lot. Um, it's super contemporary. It's going to go in my office. I took a wooden paper plate, a dowel rod, a piece of scrap wood, and a lighter. So take your paper or your wood plate, don't use a paper plate, wood plate, and char the edges of this. I'm literally just going around small sections at a time and charring it, getting it to the kind of look, the burned look that I like, and then I'm going to shake it off. I'm gonna shake it vigorously and uh, blow out that flame and then start it on another section. So eventually your wood will look like this. Obviously I also burned out that center section as well. I then went inside and drilled a hole in my scrap wood that was large enough for my dowel rod. And then I took my Waverly ink chalk paint and just did one coat all the way around the base and that dowel rod as well. And then I took my antiquing wax also from Waverly and just covered the wood in a fairly decent amount of um, antiquing wax. I didn't go as heavy in all areas though with this and I kind of did it that way on purpose. I wiped off any of the excess, glued it to the dowel rod and this is what the finished product looks like. Again, I love this. I think it's super contemporary. It's super modern. It's going to stay in my office and it will be in the background of many of my future videos. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you liked these videos. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Also, thank you all so, so much for all of your support. I really appreciate all of you. Thanks again.